Got another question on the carbonyl compounds topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay so make a start now there's a couple of ways you can do this one I'll go through the other way um, once I've gone through this. So the first thing I'm doing is adding Tollens reagent to all three and you'll see compound D is the only one with an aldehyde functional group so that's the only one that's going to give a silver mirror. The reaction for that is this here so basically it's just the oxidation of the aldehyde group to the carboxylic acid group so for the next part obviously you're left with compounds c and e so you would add acidified potassium dichromate 6 to those two only c can be oxidized because it's got this primary alcohol group so it's going to give an orange to green color change you can either oxidize the primary alcohol just to the aldehyde group so your equation would look like that Alternatively, you can oxidize it all the way to the carboxylic acid group in which the equation looks like that. So the other way you can do it is react all three with acidified potassium dichromate first. Compound E can't be oxidized because you've got a ketone and a tertiary alcohol group there. So you're not going to see the orange to green color change. Equations wise, you could either show the oxidation of compound C, which I've already shown, or the oxidation of compound E. Again, I've already shown that equation. That would leave you with C and D. So remember, D's got the aldehyde group, so if you reacted both of those with Tollens reagent, only D's gonna give the silver mirror. And again, you've already seen the oxidation reaction for compound D. Moving on to the mechanism. So we're told that when the CeCl3 is present, only the ketone groups reduced, so the reaction is going to take place here. The NABH4 is a source of hydride ion, so we're going to use the hydride ion in the mechanism. So we take a curly arrow from the lone pair on the H-, take it to that slightly positive carbon, and we need to repel a pair of electrons from the pi bond in the double bond up to the O. That's going to give the intermediate shown on the screen now, so there's a couple of ways you can finish this off. You can either go for an H2O molecule, put the dipoles on, and take a pair of electrons or so curly arrow from the lone pair on the O minus onto the H, and obviously that's going to break that bond there. So that would give you the organic product and an OH minus ion. Alternatively, you can just use an H plus ion here, so you would just get the organic product. And the product is compound D from those original three compounds. Moving on to the number of carbon-13 NMR peaks in C, D and E. You can see I've colour-coded the carbon environments. So in compound C, all of the carbons are different in terms of environment. So we get five peaks for C. Likewise for D, they're all different, all the carbons. So another five peaks for that one. Whereas in compound E, these two methyl carbons are equivalent. And then there's, these are all different, so 4 for E. Okay, so for part D, so we've got to apply this um, reaction information to a couple of alkenes. So pentuene, you see I've broken that double bond there. So we're going to get basically C double bond O, where the two carbons of the double bond are. So the two organic products would be those. And moving on to hexa 2 diene so again, the skeletal formula just to help. So we'll break the two carbon-carbon double bonds. You'll notice that this part and this part are the same. So we're going to get two identical molecules where you've just got H, CH3, C double bond O. And this bit here is going to be CH double bond O, CH double bond O. So we get those. And for the final part, we're kind of applying the reaction in reverse. So we're told what the product is, hexane 1,6-diol. So compound G must have a carbon-carbon double bond between these carbons here. So it's going to be a ring, so that means G is cyclohexene. 